Hi guys, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you the new tools like Auto Attach offered by Character Creator and iClone to improve the consistency of your characters. We talk about consistency because we're gonna simulate the physicality of elements that make up our characters. Artists tend to pay more attention to the soft or flexible elements like clothes or hair, and they often neglect the rigid parts when creating the design. Now this will cause the animation to look very unprofessional especially nowadays with technology having not only much more detail, but also a lot more fidelity in terms of the materials that make up the character. So we've got to try and live up to those standards. To create this tutorial, I've divided the characters into three categories that I've illustrated with these three examples where you can better understand the categories and common mistakes made in each one. We're going to be looking at rigid armor, rigid structure and mixed structure. And I'm going to use each armor to talk about the new tools like auto attach and AccuRig. But let's start with the most used, the rigid armor. Whether futuristic or medieval in style, it can be seen in CGI movies and is usually used in armor or suits that do not restrict the character's movements. It's even more common to see in realistic video game trailers with armor that in real life would be way too heavy to be used. And it's almost impossible not to find them in video games where they can even be bought separately in the form of skins. Now the quality and complexity of these armors has increased over the years and fans no longer accept errors common in the past, such as the rigid armor deformation. The most common mistake in this technique comes mainly from adding them to the character in the wrong way and not understanding that rigid armor is heavy and therefore inevitably limits the movement that our characters can do. So let's look at several ways we can integrate different parts into a real armor. In this case, a polis Husa armor that you can get from the Tajiran Art Studio Sketchfab page. Let's start with the less important and simple armor parts such as the tacit and the van brace. We have to go to the create menu to access the accessory menu and import these parts. Now, if in our case, the arm is subdivided, we'll have to select them one by one and convert them into accessories using a button with the same name. Now we have to go to the lower part of the modify window to find the attach section and link the armor part with the corresponding bone. Now I do recommend that not all the armors imported at the same time. That way we can focus on the individual components separately. And thanks to the improvements in Character Creator 4, we can check the problems that arise when the character moves without having to leave the program. Chances are that in this case, there are times when the armor's intersected by other models. Don't hesitate to edit the object shells underneath them so that problem doesn't continue to happen. You can use the rotation gizmo and the movement gizmo to do that. Now elements like these applied with this technique are widely used as complements to cloth or leather clothing and they do give striking variety to our characters but let's move on to components that can be a little more complex in nature and that need its own skeleton in this case that armor element is going to be the helmet now helmets usually have only one or two pieces but this particular helmet here has several pieces at the back now we can use this to our advantage because it allows us to animate the different parts of the helmet and get a much more realistic feeling. If we go to a 3D program that actually allows us to introduce bones in the hole, we can handle this problem because we can add some bones and just move it separately. And this time we're gonna import it not as an accessory, but actually as a prop so that we can introduce the bone system without any problems. The remaining process will be pretty much the same as the previous armor parts. We now have full control over the helmet and we can prevent it from getting into the rest of the armor. And all I'm doing here is just using the rotation gizmo, just to raise it up a little bit and get that out of the way of any interactions with the other mesh. And once that's done, you can see the comparison between a component without animation, which does not interact with the character's body, and a component that does. The difference in the helmet is very noticeable and it's very effective for the little effort involved in actually creating and animating it. We can see, you know, the mesh doesn't go through the armor no more or the cloth and it just looks a lot more realistic. But uh, what we're gonna do now is it's actually time to place the chest armor. And this can be quite a delicate issue. In our case, we're gonna actually use a one piece breastplate that we're gonna place in the same way we did the first armor parts. So, you know, it's, it's really simple to do. And the armor type here does limit movements very much. So we're not allowed to use the upper spine or kind of tilt the arms more than 90 degrees. Currently the most widely used method for its versatility is to separate an upper part to protect the thorax and a lower part for the stomach. For the shoulder pads, I've attached the lower part to the arm in the same way as I did with the first armor parts. And to the upper part, I've added a couple of bones on the helmet. The moving part of a traditional armor are usually joined by leather strips that are hidden. And in this case, the straps are visible. So I'm gonna be very careful that the only flexible part is the shoulder pads. 
It's very important that we do that just for realism in the animation and the way it's animated. Now, in video games, it is very common to find futuristic armor containing rigid parts sewn to flexible parts. This saves polygons and, you know, eliminates many of the problems we've seen before, which we will see later on. For now, attaching bones to the armor will give us several opportunities in the animation phase. We can correct the position of the shoulder pad as we did with the helmet, but in addition, when he's on top of his trotting mount, we can make a very interesting jumping animation. In this example, putting bones on a part of the armor requires a little thought before about what movements our character will make and how the armor will react. Now the scabbard of the sword, for example, is usually just for decoration, but if we add a rig, we can make it functional so that the sword can actually enter and exit the sheath without problem. Despite its curvature, we have to add a few along the length of it in a program like Maya, in such a way that the leather scabbard curves along the sword. Now, the scabbard is usually held with one hand while the other hand is used to insert the sword, so we'd need to think about putting a bone to which we can attach with the hand. The animation was just a demo, but if we wanted to, we can export it in an FBX format, the sword sheath with the animation inside Character Creator. We can then add a spring effect so that we can, you know, when the soldier walks, there's going to be some slight sway that would also be transmitted into the sword if we made an attachment when it was inside the sheath. Now, these results can be very interesting and dynamic compared to a non-functional item. Once this was done, I made the correction and added the rest of the armor, accessories, and the textures in. And, you know, once we're at that stage, we're pretty much ready to send it over to iClone and, you know, get animating. But let's move on to the next system first. We're going to now look at kind of armatures that mix rigid elements with flexible elements. And, you know, they're most widely used due to their versatility. So we're going to explore this system, but we're going to take it a step further. Making a robot or cyborg with a mix system is something relatively modern. And whenever we see it on screen, we always think there's something really futuristic that is on a level above the more classic robots. The basic idea of this system is to mimic the functioning of the human or any other animal body so we can see a rigid bone-like structure and an electronic version of the muscle fibers. Now with this, we get the same flexibility and freedom of movement as any person or even more but it does have some disadvantages. It's a very complicated thing to design firstly, and to bring a 3D model that also has to work in motion, still you have to be careful with the amount of polygons you use. Video games usually cover everything, a layer of skin or clothing that consumes less resources and requires a lot less production. So we're gonna use a character that combines a rigid structure with a flexible structure. And you can download it from Sketchfab if you search for my shop or the word Neo Robot. When we are in an empty character creator project, we're gonna actually import our character directly before we continue. I recommend if you haven't done it previously to rename all the robot parts just to make it easier to work with later. And once we've done that, we're gonna be ready to use a new tool that Reillusion's actually added, and that is the AccuRig tool. It's a very, very, cool tool and it opens a lot of new horizons which is no longer a program almost entirely focused on realistic or stylized character it's now open to all character types and it's become essentially a tool for any project involving 3d models just take a look at this crab robot which can be completely rigged in just a couple of minutes even though it doesn't have a human form now going back to our model let's select all the models that are going to be flexible in my case i'm going to be selecting some rigid elements now that we have selected them we go to the right side and click on the AccuRig button. And this will take us into the AccuRig menu where we can start by clicking on create guide buttons. By doing so, the system's gonna actually place the joints calculated in the best arrangement it can. And then we can confirm if this is the best option for these points or modify it to better fit our model. So to do this, when selecting some joints, a small help window will actually appear to inform us which is the correct position. So what we wanna do is the system usually places these points correctly. So as soon as we've checked them, we can go to the generate skeleton and this will then generate the skeleton for us. This is where the magic actually happens. Now, in other programs, creating and adjusting skeleton for our character would take hours. Now, however, the system actually generates the skeleton of our characters perfectly adjusted to this anatomy. So we can still adjust it a little bit if we're not satisfied with the results or just hit the bind skin button. Now the result is fantastic. So even in the area of the fingers where there's usually you know, a lot more faults when they stick close to each other, the 
results are perfect. If you've got several overlapping models, you'll probably encounter slight problems. So with a quick review using skin weights tool, you'll actually see the result is perfect. If the hard surface appears shaky or out of place when incorporated, the solution will be the same. Another thing to account for is that if you've rigged the character in this way, or if you make a mistake as in my case, you can use the transfer skin weight button, but don't worry, we can simply go back to the AccuRig menu and use the bind skin button. And now it's the time to, you know, use the example animation provided by a character creator to actually see the errors. Now, the most common is that the muscle packs overlap and you have to rely on the skim weight tool. Once we've made sure that we've eliminated all of these errors, we have to check the textures as well. Most often when characters move, it leaves part of the model visible that we didn't see when we actually made those textures. So once this is done, we just need to give the character the facial expression it needs. And thanks to the functionalities offered by a character creator, we can add these expressions in a very, very short time. Doesn't take long at all. And you know, it's really simple to do. So we can create them in a program itself, or if it's more comfortable, we can do it by taking the character to ZBrush. Having rigged our character in Character Creator, we have the possibility to add not only facial deformations, but we can also have the possibility to make body deformations as well by registering them as facial deformations. This is very useful in these cases to make a more realistic muscular or to add special animations to the body. Now in this respect, there is a plugin for iClone called JCM Controller, which is used to make corrective deformations. Maybe in the future, I will talk about this revolutionary system that focuses on hyperrealism in anatomy. An interesting note when animating in iClone and when dealing with robots in iClone, and there's one factor that you should take into account, animated components. Now it's common to find electronic components in a futuristic style character, and these elements may even be animated. Adding these elements is really easy using iClone. We simply need to import the pre-rigged component and position it. When we have it ready, we just have to use the link option on the nearest bone of our character. But we can go even further, and I'm sure you've seen examples where a robotic extension's been added to the character. The classic example is the articulated arm that is fully animated. Now, doing this is a lot easier than you might think thanks to the Accurig system. Simply, we introduce the mechanical arms in Character Creator and then press the Accurig button to redo the same simple process we've already seen. In this case, the bones will be regenerated, such as the leg bones, which we're not going to actually use. For these cases, AccuRig has a very practical solution that actually allows us to mask the bones out so they're not going to bother us later on and they're not going to get in the way or interfere with what we're trying to do. And as we saw a moment ago, you know, we just have to import it into our clone and use the link option to attach it to our character. The arms in our clone can be animated independently using the edit animation layer menu. I recommend animating these elements after animating the main character as their movements will have to complement the base character. And now both animations combine and interact with objects in a natural way. And we'll see some more examples later on, but now we're talking about mechanical arms and the last system the rigid system, and it's the traditional one used for classic robots. It's a very complicated system because we cannot use elastic elements and deformations, forcing us to think very carefully about the structure that makes the character. However, despite the complications in moving these characters, they are very popular. The reason is that robots can virtually take any shape and can be animated in a creative way that's impossible in other systems. This means that they can be characters that attract much more attention now more than ever, and in real life we can see incredible advances in robot technology and today most people see more robots than people in armor. Looking at this technology and studying its movements and structure can help us to make more consistent and realistic robot characters. Now of course we can't pretend to simulate 100% the mechanisms of such a complex robot. We just have to make it look realistic as the robot design and it will take some inspiration from reality too to actually get that character and leave the rest to creativity. Now for inspiration, look at the work of Luka Misviks and Vitaly Bulgarov. Their work is more inspired by human anatomy than actual robots and gives the impression that their designs could work in reality even if they do not. 
I clone off as a free robot character with a different bone system to character creator. And it proves that even if we have a robot already rigged in an external program, we can actually still bring it into our clone and begin animating it in any way we like. So if we remember earlier when we introduced you to that crab robot, you can actually download that free on Sketchfab if you search for RoboCrab. Now, like most robots, its joints only rotate on one axis and we have to take this into account. We don't want to destroy the model. So this way of animating is very complicated and we may want to switch to our character to the mix system by placing flexible elements in the joints. Another way to avoid this problem is to use a popular solution in character design, the use of sphere joints. This system is widely used in non-mechanical characters such as golems and being a more pleasing system to the eye and allowing us all the flexibility that we need. For this last system, I've created a retro style robot that you can find and use by downloading it from Sketchfab by searching un under retro futuristic robot. I've based the whole system on joints using fears, but we also have some hydraulic systems too that will allow us to implement that into the rig. Now check how well the sphere system works inside character creator. Uh, we're going to see how useful it is to have elements like hydraulic tubes. The tubes have polygons at the top and the bottom. This way, if the lower polygons have a bind skeleton at the hips and the upper polygons have a bind skeleton at the chest, when the character is actually moving, it gives the impression the hydraulic tubes expand and contract by sliding really smoothly. So I've got a different version of this robot for my next video game called The Evil Fury that is available on Steam. In this version, I wanted the robot to look a lot nicer, so I added bulbs on the sides with the same system spheres, and you know, it just gives that a bit more of a nicer look. And you can move these independently. I've also attached two antennas to which I added a spring effect to give the face more dynamism. Now, I also wanted his face to have facial expressions and to be able to talk despite being a rigid robot. It occurred to me that the solution to this problem could be to use a character create a base character with all the expressions and lip sync system that the program has to offer so that the final result would be that of an LED screen instead of eyes and mouth. I decided to put the face behind the helmet and illuminate the pupils and the inside of the mouth. And I made the rest of the body transparent, including the skull, which I took out of the helmet so that I could attach some eyebrows to it. So it would look like they had a system of magnets on the robot's forehead when they move. Now to get all this, I had to use the base character and add the rest of the armor as clothes. It's a slower process, but it's worth it in exchange for all the animation and facial expressions that the face offers. After this, I made the animations in iClone of the three characters to make a small sample video. Remember, iClone offers an animated example robot with different aesthetics to give you an idea of what you can achieve. Afterwards, I could take advantage of the extensions that Reillusions just released to link iClone with Unreal through LiveLink. In a matter of seconds, both programs are linked and we can see a beautiful render in real time. In addition to adjusting textures and lighting in Unreal, I added fluid simulation to the characters. So I hope you like the final results and find the tutorial useful. Here I say a goodbye, but don't forget to subscribe to the Reillusion YouTube channel and check out all of their wonderful tutorials. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications. Hopefully see you again soon for another tutorial.